Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Oh, let's get ready to Sacco. <laughs> out <laughs> all right all right you're making your our listeners have turned us off i am not doing this this is awful okay i mean i could have gone longer honestly i feel like i'm a one of those like spanish announcers that just called a goal I, it was fun to kind of change it up i i felt the energy that you normally have and it was it felt great honestly how are you jason it's uh i think this is episode what like 37 or something like that how in the you? comments, in the comments below, please let me know, let us know whether or not you ever want Alex to introduce the show again, or <laughs> if he just lost all privileges by screaming and making your ears bleed. Lord, I could have gone for another twenty seconds. Honestly. I wonder. I was, I was like just starting to hit my stride there. Do you feel <laughs> as annoyed with my screaming as I felt with the second half of your oh there? Or? I have no, I have no comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I plead the fizz. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm out. Yeah, uh, it's a uh, week, week five. We're on week five already. Holy crap. Amazing. Um, let's, yeah, let's do this. I mean, half the teams might not play this week due to buys or COVID, but hey, we're going we're gonna to hit you with all that fresh old Sacco action. There you go. Uh, so our two buy teams this week are the Green Bay Packers and Detroit Lions. And uh, with that, we're going to be breaking down every single matchup, talking through all of the relevant fantasy players. Uh, as of this recording, we are five subscribers away from 100 so if you have not yet please uh go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit the bell on youtube uh leave a comment down below again on whether or not alex is able to ever introduce the show again um (laughs) yeah and also if you're on we've gotten a ton of new apple listeners recently first of all welcome you're like the most important platform so uh if you're listening on an apple device please we love your faces yes we love your faces and please leave us a review on apple as well or any platform you listen on all right let's get into this first game if 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 you make fun of jason in a comments and give us five stars i'll send you a dollar just send me your venmo on twitter um and uh, we'll make that happen Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, actually, I'll, <laughs> I'll I will let you pay all the dollars. Yeah, everybody, insult me, call me whatever you want. I don't care. Just give us that five star review. That that's wonderful. All right, let's break down this Thursday night yep. game. We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the sh- our Chicago Bears. Uh, the line is Bucks minus three and a half. What are you are you looking for anything out of this game? What are you looking for from the Bucks other than to see them limp a team out onto the field? Yeah, over under is 44 and a half. I actually thought you were going to call them the shit Chicago Bears and I was like, "Whoa, that's graphic." <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I wanted to, but this is a kid show. Kid show. Yeah, no, I, I like yeah, I, sorry. Uh, apologies. Again, explicit. Do we have to mark it? No idea. Uh, the Buccaneers <laughs> are basically their enti- their entire team is basically hurt at this point. Uh, OJ Howard I, season I don't ending know if IR with even... an Achilles. Godwin's out with a hammy. Bye. McCoy's out with an ankle. Fournette's Bye. doubtful with an ankle. Bye. Mike Evans questionable Bye. with an ankle. Scotty Miller did not practice. Uh, has a hip groin Bye. injury. Not great. <laughs> how how are they gonna? S- score on the bears defense like i was gonna say 44 and a half i think i i think both defenses are good i think you play the under even though the overs have been hitting uh in the nfl um but that that's more of a gambling aspect i have no idea what to do with this game from a fantasy standpoint i'd also take um, the bears to cover the bears that all, spread too yeah the, the plus three and a half at yeah. home on a short week where they don't have to travel um yeah i just uh there is not a lot that I'm looking for in this game. I guess Scotty Miller, if he plays, go pick him up. I guess you can play him, but the Bears' d- defense has a really good uh, pass defense, and you can't really trust 
anything in this game. Um, I, I would not be surprised to see this be like a 17-14 final or a 21-17 final. And good luck trying to figure out who's going to score the touchdowns in this one. Um, there, there is not a whole lot that I'm looking for out of either team, honestly. The, the Bears are the only team in the NFL without a rushing touchdown. Uh, and so from a David Montgomery standpoint, that's not great. Uh, I, he, he does have a receiving touchdown in week two against the Giants. But um, man, if, if he's not going to get the end zone, play. there's not a whole. Yeah, it, right. It was Mitch kind of ad-libbing backyard football style. Foles was not impressive against a really good indie defense this past week. Um, and the Bucks were fine against the Chargers, um, but the Chargers really lost that game more than the Bucks won the game. So I like if they're going to limp into Chicago with a broken offense, um, there, there's I mean, it's a stay away game from a fantasy standpoint, in, in my opinion. Where are you thinking? Uh, yeah, I completely agree with you as far as your outlook on the Bucks. The only thing I would say is, um, a potential add to your team, not maybe plug in against the Bears, would be Scotty Miller. Those receivers can't yeah. stay healthy, and Mike Evans does not look well right now with his ankle. So I wouldn't be surprised if he actually did end up missing. If he missed, the Scotty Miller output, just the target share alone would be nuts. Um, what I would say yep. that I'm actually a little bit more intrigued by well scotty miller if if the receivers can't stay healthy then scotty miller could have you know multi-week value there so maybe he's worth adding um but from the bears darnell mooney out snapped anthony miller 57 to 52 uh percent last week had nine targets after 11 in the first three weeks that might be a end of the bench flyer um it, it's interesting they're really trying to there get the go. rookie involved but yeah, I, I will also point out that I, I think Keyshawn Vaughn actually gets a, a good deal of run this week um, because the Bears like to kind of sit back with their linebackers and Keyshawn Vaughn for the first time last week finally started getting more involved in, from a checkdown standpoint. I, I know I mentioned this last week with uh, Naheem Hines, but um, I, I really do feel like Brady's going to be checking down a lot to his running backs um, and with uh, with Fournette being out. The Bears rushing defense has not been super impressive so far, so I would not be surprised to see Ronald Jones have a good game on the ground, and I would not be surprised to see Keyshawn Vaughn be more involved from an air aerial standpoint. Um, just just from a from a target perspective, I would I would expect him to have five plus targets, um, just just because it seemed like they were using him a little bit more last week. Yeah, absolutely. But Arian said, you know, his time will come, and well, if you have Lashawn McCoy out with an injury and Leonard Fournette out with an injury. What's up, Keyshawn Vaughn? Um, yeah, fun times ahead. Yeah. But uh, all right, let's move to our Sunday games. Uh, the first up, Bills at Titans. Uh, Vegas took it off because of the COVIDness. Um, let's talk about the Bills first, it, and then we can open, talk. <laughs> it opened at Bills minus six and a half, and the over under was forty seven. Um, but nobody has any. Again, we have no idea what's going to happen with the, with the Titans this year. Yeah, I mean, you had um, Corey Davis test positive for COVID, get placed on COVID IR on Wednesday. Um, yikes. I I don't, who knows? I mean, there's pictures and video evidence of them uh, practicing this, yeah. this week when the NFL ordered them to board up their facility, go home and isolate. <laughs> and then you have the entire team taking or having photos taken of them practicing at a private school, uh, private high school field. Uh, you have to imagine that if Corey Davis was at that practice, which Ryan Tannehill, all the starters were there. You have to imagine if Corey Davis. Wait, hold is, on. You mispronounced his name. Ryan Tannehill. Excuse me. I don't want to offend. Uh, but you have to think that if Corey Davis was there, it's not going to be good as far as the outlook for Bill's Titans this weekend. So. Man, those Titans are just going to get just all the crap thrown on them for as long as this is an issue. But yeah, it's it's possible that maybe AJ Brown will be healthy by the time they play their next game. Uh, we have no idea when that's going to be. So that, that's something to root for. 
Um, <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> I, I like. I don't even know if it's worth discuss discussing this game because we don't know if it's going to happen again. Start your studs if if they play, and if they don't play, then good luck. If like for, for the commissioners that you know we instituted a, a rule in our league where hey, if you need to drop somebody to pick somebody up, go ahead and. And me being the commish, I just manually went back in and added them before waivers. I actually thought that was somewhat effective. But again, if you're going to be dropping Derrick Henry, whoever you're picking up, you're not obviously is not going to replace the production. It's uh, it's very, very frustrating uh, and uh, an unintended consequence of of a covid year where. It just sucks. So good good luck if you have people playing in this game and uh, start your studs if they play. And if they don't play, I, I hope that we can find somebody to replace them with. Yeah, the only thing I would say for the Bills is that Singletary played 88% of snaps last week with Moss out. But Zach Moss had a limited practice already this week. I think that he comes back and, hey, what's up, Carrie Split? Here we are. So... Everybody that's excited about Singletary after one week of production, I would tuck him very nice and neatly back under your bench. But Kerry Split sounds like a country music artist, just for the record. <laughs> Take me home. All right. Uh, next up, we have Jaguars at the Texans. Texans uh, are favored minus six and a half. I will take the under on that. I do not think that they covered. The Texans fired Bill O'Brien. It's a dumpster fire in Houston right now. I think the Jaguars not only could cover this spread, but get a sneaky W against Romeo Crennel, now the oldest uh, named head coach, I think, in NFL history at 70 plus mm-hmm. but uh the jaguars james robinson second in receiving yards at the running back position behind only alvin Kamara. uh gotta love to see it man cheers to anybody that landed him everybody that landed him late in drafts or on the waiver wire um and then we had our first dj chark sighting of the year Eight oh. of eight catches of nine targets for 95 yards and two scores against the Bengals. Gotta think people, even though they were, you know, sick and tired of three weeks of crap, still fired him up against the Bengals. And man, did he deliver. But uh, yeah. Hey, some, some of us on this podcast uh, decided to start Brandon Cooks over DJ Chark in their league uh, this week. And uh, Brandon Cooks delivered a zero spot and Brandon, Brandon Cooks can just go to hell. I hate him. Uh, DJ Chark coming through with a 25 point week on a, and a half PPR league. And where was he? Big old donut from. He, he was, where he was, was on, he was on your bench. He was, he was on your, your bench. I hate you. Shut up. Um, I'm you not started really Brandon Cooks again, over this, him. He wasn't healthy. I'm not proud of my decisions. You're Owen what now? You're Owen four? <clears throat> Alex Krog has a fantasy um, football um, podcast and he had DJ Chark on his bench in week three against the Bengals, ladies and gents. <clears throat> Minnesota had a terrible pass defense and the Bengals pass defense was pretty good and the exact opposite ended up happening. Hey, that's okay. I'm hosting a fancy football podcast. I don't know why people are listening once again. <laughs> um, when, when, when it comes to the Jaguars, uh, you know, we projected DJ Chark to be a, a top 20 wide receiver this year. I, I had him in the top 15. Yeah. Um, af- after a huge week, he's, he's up to 21, which is very encouraging. Um, and, and that includes missing week three against Miami. He's been over 10 points every week so far. Uh, I, I think he's a very safe uh, fire him up uh, the rest of the way, especially with Minshew magic going crazy. James James Robinson, man, top six running back so far this year. Uh, who would have ever seen that coming? That's insane. Uh, I I think I think a lot of people have cooled off on Keelan Cole and uh, your boy Lavisca Chenault, uh, who are suddenly outside the top twenty at their position after a couple of weeks. 
Uh, once they didn't do anything when DJ was out against Miami week three, it was kind of like, hey, what's really going on here? Um, I, I would not be surprised to see Keelan Cole be droppable after this week, honestly, if he doesn't do anything. Just that that would be the one thing that I would be looking out for. Um, and uh, Minshew Magic, man, still still a QB one and playable if if you're looking for for a waiver uh, wire ad and streaming this week with a couple buys. Couldn't agree more. That was great. Um, moving on, our next game: Bengals at Ravens. The Ravens are now minus twelve and a half <laughs> against the Bengals <laughs> at home. Um, are you taking them to cover that? You think that they'll cover twelve and a half? Are the Ravens that good? Like, I would is, say like, no. I, I know their def. Like I, I think their defense is good. But I don't know how good their offense is, honestly. And when if you're going to uh, um, the line I'm looking at, it's minus 13. So you're you're telling me if they're up 17 points with three minutes left that Joe Burrow is not going to go down and score a touchdown to cover the spread and and lose by 10? Yeah. Probably. Um, so I uh, yeah, the over under is 51 in this game. Um, I. Uh, Again, I just cannot believe how inefficient the Ravens passing game is. It's it's Mark Andrews or bust. And there's like it's so hard to play Hollywood Brown in that offense at this point, right? Like you you can't start him until further notice. I I actually disagree because so Really? Yeah, Marquise Brown has 44% of the team's air yard share this season for pro football focus, uh, which in terms of air yard share on a player basis, it's he's third in the league behind only Adam Thielen and Odell Beckham. And what that means is that is passes both complete, incomplete, going through the air. He has 44% of his team's share which means the offense is trying to get Marquise Brown the ball. The issue is that they have yet to be very successful in doing it. Um, at least last week, he got tackled at the one. So miss out on a touchdown there mm-hmm. the week before. Uh, Lamar Jackson just plain missed him on two wide open touchdowns. So yep. I think the regression is coming. I think he will be able to cash in eventually, whether or not it's against the Bengals here in, in, you know, week five. I'm not sure. I just know that he is supposed to be, you know, very involved in this offense and a key figure in it. And to this point, they just haven't been able to execute. So I'm I'm holding and I'm still honestly starting Marquise Brown as a flex play because I think that the volume is there and the the target share is there. They just need to get better at getting the ball to him. And that's on Lamar Jackson. So other than that, those those are all great. Those are really great. I mean, he's had six targets in every game. He had eight last week. Um, Otherwise, it's six across the board. So it's it's there just there's been no production and it's just super can't get frustrating, it especially if you took him. Yeah. He, he's currently wide receiver 51 in a half PPR league. And I, I just, it's so tough to play him uh, at, at this point because just the production doesn't warrant it. That's, that's so. the only thing I'm looking from the, uh, from the Ravens. Uh, and then I'm, I'm sure that you're looking up, looking for, for T Higgins share uh, going forward. He, he's your guy. And and the the continued phase out of AJ Green and the continued progression of Tyler Boyd. Yeah, I don't want to move on to the Ravens from just yet. I will say that I am looking to see what really? if anything happens with Ingram, Dobbins, and Edwards. Man, as a freaking as a freaking it's Dobbins, a mystery. Rostens, You'll never know. You just you think that this coach is going to go with a three headed monster the entire season? I like he's the same guy that had Ray Rice. Like, man, it's just so extremely frustrating as a Dobbins roster manager that uh, I, this situation continues. I'm just all I keep telling he, myself is, I mean, he didn't he, have a preseason to learn the playbook. He didn't have a preseason to to execute the plays, 
and they put Edwards in there uh, willy nilly. Mark Ingram is currently running back forty one. He's JK bad, Downs by the way. He's the third running best back running back on that team. Gus Edwards is running back fifty five. You can't start any of them until further notice. Yes, that's accurate. I'm just hoping that one of them breaks out against the Bengals. And then, yes, for the Bengals, let's talk some T. Higgins. I got some more stats for you. If uh, <laughs> if Tuesday's waiver show wasn't enough, I got all the stats. T. Higgins target share progression over four weeks. 0% week one, 10% week two at 21% week three, 20% again last week. T. Higgins, air yards, zero week one, 69. Nice. Week two, 150 week three. <laughs> That's my line. <laughs> 126 last week. T. Higgins targets zero, six, nine, seven over four weeks. Obviously, you know, the Bengals got out early and didn't have to do a whole lot in the passing game in the second half of last week's game. So that was the Joe Mixon show. Um, so mm -hmm. that target share percentage is at 20% is more what's tickling my fancy. Uh, but AJ Green targets. I, say, I, th I think there was a nice in there from a uh, T Higgins target share. So I just want to point that out. Uh, AJ Green's currently wide receiver 81. You could borderline drop him at this point. Not borderline, smash the drop button. Go get you some T Higgins. He's the man. AJ Green targets uh, first four weeks. Nine targets week one, 13 targets week two, six targets week three, five targets week four. Alex has now fidgeted with, or I'm going to, I need a little counter in the top right of the screen that just counts how many times you have to fidget with your headphones because you left your headphones at work. Cause this is actually really funny to watch. Oh, stop it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, what else are you looking for from the Bengals? Like, you got to be terrified to to start anybody against the Ravens defense, right? Like, are you sitting Joe Mixon after his breakout week? Um. So Joe Mixon has had 16 or more carries in every game so far. I know he wasn't being super productive with them the first couple weeks. But, I mean, the, the volume's there. Um, so I don't know how you can sit him after a 39 point week, but Baltimore is really good against the run. So if you have, you know, like a Mike, you know, if you have Mike Davis, you're starting him over Mixon. If you have a James Robinson, you're starting him over Mixon. If you have, you know, it kind of some of those fringe guys, I think if you can try to get away from Mixon, I think it's going to be profitable this week. I understand if you have to play him, then then do it. But he he seems like he's due for somewhat of a regression. Currently running back eight uh, after a 39 point week and half PPR. Um, Tyler Boyd's currently wide receiver 17, which is good. And Joe Burrow is still a top 10 quarterback. And I expect him to be the rest of the way if they keep airing it out as much as they do. And I'm not comparing Joe Burrow to Pat Mahomes, but Mahomes did a pretty good number on Baltimore a couple weeks ago. So I, I would not see, be surprised to see uh, Tyler Boyd have a pretty profitable game here on the on the Ravens defense, especially if they're behind and they have to air it out. They're not afraid to throw the ball over the field. No, and that's why I would be really um, I, I'm not intrigued, but it would be really reassuring for me as somebody that has T Higgins in a lot of different leagues to see them be able to put up points against what I think is a very good defense that would uh, be mm -hmm. very encouraging. So if they're able to pass and Burrow can move the ball against the Ravens, then I'm pumped for the rest of the season as a permanent starter for, you know, Boyd and Higgins both. Uh, as far as Mixon, the one thing that gives me reason to think that he could actually still produce at at least a high end RB two level or mid to high end RB two level is his uh, the progression of his snap share uh, over four weeks. Week one, Joe Mixon only was in on fifty nine percent of snaps. Week two, in on fifty percent of snaps. Week three, seventy two percent. Last week, eighty three percent of snaps. 
and uh, did walk away uh, 83 with six catches last week. If he's getting, you know, f- between four, five, six, seven catches, like that's a decent floor for a running back. That's the usage everybody wants out of Joe Mixon that we haven't had yet. So hopefully that continues. 31 touches is a ton, and it's all about those catches. Uh, six catches, 25 carries last week. I know they were icing the game, but 31 touches is is a huge amount uh, for any running back. And if they're going to phase out Geo Bernard, and they're actually going to throw the ball to Mixon, then you have a you have a running back one the rest of the way. Um, but it, it all comes down to that usage rate, and that's super encouraging if you're a Mixon owner, based on what Jason just said. If he's going to be on an 83% of snaps, then that's exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, and if he can produce against the Baltimore Ravens defense, then goodbye your ability to trade for Joe Mixon, you know? So, yep. all right. Um, yeah, heads up, if, if, if he sucks this week, they do have Indy next week, which is another really tough rush defense. Um, so, so, you know, you might be looking at two more weeks of a rough mix and run. And then I, he's on by, I think after that. So um, you're, uh, you're, you're hoping to get a little more out of him than just a one week explosion, but don't be surprised if it's not there. Yeah. And uh, speaking about explosions, my heart explodes every time somebody listens, likes, and subscribes, especially if you're on YouTube or Apple, please go ahead, hit that, uh, hit the bell, get those, sub, uh, get those notifications. You know, I'm a company man, Alex. My heart just exploded promoting myself. <clears throat> Moving on. Panthers at Falcons. Falcons. I can't believe that they're favored in any game. But I guess if you play the Panthers, you have a chance. Falcons are only favored one and a half at home. Not very pretty. Do you think that they cover? I wouldn't be shocked if they lost. Never bet on any Atlanta game ever because you're always going to be on the wrong side of it. Uh, over, over under 50, over under 54, uh, in this game. Uh, I don't trust the Falcons as far as I can throw them. Uh, they, they, had, so what, I mean, so it seems like Julio Jones is going to be out because you're watching the Monday night game and Julio has a pretty good first half and, uh, you're like, okay, like he looks good. And then all of a sudden at halftime, they're like, oh yeah, Julio Jones is going to play. It's like, okay. Uh, so it's time for Cal- Calvin Ridley to finally have a catch. And he now it's didn't. Jair Alexander. He literally had zero. He literally had zero catches, zero points, and is still currently the number one wide receiver uh, in a half PPR league, which is pretty Don't crazy. Don't you love fantasy um, football? Not really. <laughs> um, there, there's a guy by the name of, with the last name Zacchaeus, um, who randomly had 20 points last week in a half PPR league. And it's like, what is going on? Uh, Julio last three weeks, last three weeks, Julio Jones, two for 24 does not play four for 32. Doesn't come out of the locker room after the first half too early to tell if he's playing this week. Oh man. Mm -hmm. RIP man. Um, I I don't even know what the outlook is for Julio. Hopefully he gets healthy. This is why no the idea. Packers this is why the Packers sat Devontae Adams, even though Devontae Adams said he was fine and could go. Yep. Like sit these guys, get them healthy, otherwise the hammies can linger. And if you start getting older and you tweak stuff more, and here we are with Julio. But yeah. Thank yeah. God Ridley did not get a point in that game. I narrowly won a fantasy matchup because Ridley had zero <laughs> points. So I will take it. And I, I also lost yeah, one because he, uh, of it, but don't care. Yeah, he, he scored zero points in a league that I was facing him in. And uh, that uh, I, I've now lost back-to-back weeks in that league by a combined 1.84 points uh, because he scored zero points. Um, so I, it was more of just... Another another tease for me where my all my teams suck this year. I don't I just don't get it. Well, do yeah, better. Russell Gage. R- Russell Gage was just really non existent in an end zone target, but it's just like Zacchaeus. What the hell? I there's nothing, nothing to learn about that offense. And and to your point, you know, you mentioned on the show uh, on Tuesday, uh, 
Teddy Bridgewater is the guy to to have against a terrible offense and maybe we'll see Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore get back on track but it's potential that Robbie Anderson just keeps on on chugging you know who who knows I got some great Robbie Anderson stats Robbie Anderson currently 7th in targets 11th in target rate 12th in air yard share 6th in red zone targets second in yards after the catch has out targeted DJ Moore 34 32 hmm. this guy unbelievable congratulations to anybody that drafted him you got him in at a huge value uh Panthers we yep. mentioned it in our stream of the week if you listen to our waiver wire podcast if you have not Please go listen to it. We'll tell you everybody that you should consider picking up uh, to make your teams better. We also talk through fab for each and every player that we do talk about um, because the uh, the world continues to move to fab waiver systems. If your commissioner or league has not moved to it, you should because it is a much more it's a much better and more equitable way to run waivers. Um but the uh, my stream of the week was Teddy Bridgewater this week. He plays the Falcons two out of the next four weeks. The Falcons currently give up the most fantasy points in the league to the quarterback position, averaging more than 30 points per week given up to the quarterback position. Um, Mike Davis, third among all running backs and targets behind only Kamara and Zeke. Hmm. That's insane. He didn't wow. play for the first two weeks because CMC was there. Like, um, couple that with the fact if, that the Falcons have allowed the second most receptions to a running back this year. You got to think Mike Davis is going to have a heck of a game. If, uh, if, if you're, if you're a league owner, I think it's worth trying to explore a trade for Christian McCaffrey because when he comes back, he's just going to explode. Do and you like I, I, being, being an owner in our league that I'm own four in, I have to hold on to him because he's elite. Like he will win you a league if you can get in the playoffs. But it just comes like you're so frustrated because you, you can't trade him. But if you keep him, you're probably going to keep losing unless you got Mike Davis. Um, so so it would be my suggestion to try to go out and get and trade for Christian McCaffrey just to kind of sniff the waters and see if he's available. Yeah, especially if you're that CMC manager like Alex is and you're now 0-4 and, and desperate to get a W and you're looking at at least another week or two, at potentially three without CMC and you need to win now, I would... It's like sharks circling the blood in the water. Go ahead and see if you can't land CMC. Yeah, like go right, like try to go get him, you know. But, but like I don't fault CMC managers for trading him because if you're losing, you can't keep losing otherwise you won't make the playoffs. Like trade him. That's at the end of the day you just, you just got to do what's better for your team to try and get a W now, you know. Um yeah, and and if you, if you have a you know, a surplus of running backs and you can try to do a two for one to be like, Hey, I'm helping you out. And you're trying to really plan for the playoffs. I mean, Christian McCaffrey's somebody that you should be trying to go out and get honestly in every league. Yep. Our next game Raiders at chiefs chiefs minus 13 and a half. I, I'm not going to take them (laughs) to cover that. That's disgusting. Um, for the Raiders. My only question is Hunter Renfro actually viable. Uh, I think he makes a decent bye week fill in. If you're in a pinch there, you have Brian Edwards and Ruggs still banged up, missing time. I think Renfro could be for real. He's currently a uh, wide receiver 42 in uh, half PPR, had eight targets last week, nine targets the week before. I think he's still going to see the volume. I just don't know if I want to go up against that Chiefs defense. I mean, I, other than that, you're starting. Josh Jacobs and Darren Waller. And then for the Chiefs, you got uh, Pat Mahomes out there kissing on Stefan Gilmore, uh, who just tested positive Uh-oh. for COVID, who just tested positive Uh-oh. for COVID for the Patriots. Yeah, the 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 hot picture circling on the Twitter verse today is Stefan Gilmore and Pat Mahomes face to face chit chatting 
like like face to face chit chatting after the football game on Monday night. And then uh, Gilmore tested positive for COVID two days later. So hopefully Mahomes doesn't come down with anything. Hopefully there's nothing incubating and this game gets played and the season doesn't go to hell. So. Yeah, hopefully the only thing incubating for Patrick Mahomes is his little baby and his and his fiance. Um, oh, you saw that they're hopefully. pregnant. Look at you. Sorry. Side note, we'll we'll get back to it. For for the Raiders, yes, Josh Jacobs, Darren Waller, Hunter Ren- Renfro didn't do anything until the end of the game. He he had like one catch for zero yards until I think like the third or fourth, like the end of the third, fourth quarter. Um, th- there was just not a whole lot going on there. I, I would not be surprised to see him kind of fall back to earth because they don't have a whole lot of weapons besides Waller. They're going to keep lighting up Waller. Uh, Daniel Carlson, I mean, he's a fourth ring kicker. I just want to point that out. I'm, I'm a big kicker guy. Um, and, and obviously Josh Jacobs. We know what the Chiefs offense is. Um, Clyde Edwards Alaire has not been as good as I think we thought he was going to be after the first week. Um, you know, against Houston, it looked like the Kansas City offense was just unstoppable. And trust, I mean, don't get me wrong, Edward Solaire has been very good, but he has not been like, like he's currently running back thirteen. I think we all thought he was going to be like a top eight guy coming out of week one, and he just hasn't been. Uh, he, he's gotten over ten points every week in a in a half PPR league, but um. And he's getting the carries. He's had some catches every week besides week one. He's still really good. I think people were just hoping for more. You included. Yeah, I mean, obviously, but I guess the one excuse that I would give him is the four teams that he he's played through the first four weeks of the season are the Houston Texans, the uh, Los Angeles Chargers, the Baltimore Ravens and the New England Patriots. Uh, the Ravens are in the top 10 fewest points given up or excuse me. Let's start with new England. New England is one, two, three, four, five, sixth fewest points given up to the running back position. Uh, the week before that he played Baltimore, who is seven, eighth, ninth fewest points given up to the running back position. The chargers are the 10th fewest points given up to the running back position. So, three top 10 defenses against running backs all in a row, three weeks in a row. I'm not really upset with his output in that time. 10 points, double digits every week with the 16 burger against Baltimore. The usage is there. He's catching five passes a week. Now Uh, week one, he absolutely lit up Houston. I think that you're going to see him absolutely light up Las Vegas this week. Um, It's, I mean, matchups, matchups matter. His playoff schedule is Miami, New Orleans, Atlanta. So I will take it and I just hope I make it to the playoffs and watch him run 35 times against Miami in week 14. So. Yeah, I'm I'm just saying it's slightly disappointing. I'm not totally disappointed. I would also say that the only touchdown he scored was week one when he had 19. And the fact that he's been over. Yeah, uh, ten points every week without any without any touchdowns. I think is an encouraging sign, and hopefully those touchdowns will come. Um, so maybe you know, I know he's running back thirteen, but potentially he is a buy low candidate just in case somebody is somewhat disappointed in what his current production. That's is. fair. Um, and if if you can trade, you know, if if you could trade like a like a Nick Chubb. Uh, who's hurt or even a Kareem Hunt, you know, who's been really good and try to get Clyde Edwards Lair. Um, I mean, try to go for it and, and see what, you know, or, you know, a James Robinson or uh an Eckler or just just see, you know, it's worth totally floating out players that are hurt, uh, to to try to get Clyde Edwards Lair going forward. Um, because as soon as he starts scoring touchdowns. He will be a top five back. He just hasn't yet. Yeah, absolutely. And even if you have to do two for ones to try and buy low on CEH, I think that that's uh, a good a yeah. good move to try to make because uh, I think you'll have some frustrated owners right right now anyway. All right, let's move on. We have Cardinals at Jets up next. We have the Cardinals minus seven 
I think I'm going to smash the over on the dumpster fire that is the Jets, although I wouldn't be shocked. Would you be shocked if Joe Flacco comes out throwing dimes <clears throat> in the debut of Joe Flacco? Yeah. <laughs> I, I would be. Uh, I mean, Jameson Crowder has been been really good when he plays. Um, that's the only person I'm starting on the Jets uh, offense right now. I, I know Lev Bell's coming back. Uh, so I guess you have to play him if you drafted him because you probably took him in the fifth round and maybe you don't have better options. Uh, I, I guess I. There's not a whole lot to like about the Jets offense, but the the Arizona Cardinals off or defense has been somewhat leaky um, since holding the 49ers down week one. So, I mean, I mean, the Jets put up pretty good numbers against Denver last week um, just from a from an output perspective of points. Uh, Sam Darnold's out. Obviously, Joe Flacco's in uh, Flacco loves throwing deep. I just don't really like a whole lot about their offense honestly mostly because adam gay sucks i cannot believe he was the first he was not the first coach fired um and then from from an arizona standpoint um are are they going to start throwing downfield or are they just going to keep throwing like two yard passes little baby two yard passes that's the offense that's the air raid offense so many weapons there's no air raiding like (laughs) <laughs> it's just Cliff stupid. Kingsbury, like, baby. Their aerating is literally aerating the ground and poking holes in it because they're only like their cleat marks are leaving. Oh, <laughs> turn around, catch the ball, turn around, like throw the freaking ball downfield. You have two Hall of Fame wide receivers. Throw them the ball downfield. They'll catch it. I yeah, I don't know. There's just no this whole the the entire Cardinals offense has to be extremely frustrating between the lack of just production. Kenyon Drake had the wind knocked out of him last week, did not come back. Edmonds went in and I don't know, he looked marginally, maybe marginally better, but really not a whole. It's not like he came in and blew the field away. Uh, Everybody's calling for Edmonds to replace Kenyon Drake. Maybe it happens. His snap share didn't really change, hasn't really changed week to week. So the coaching staff isn't going in the Edmonds direction. Um for now, I think you probably have to keep firing up Drake in a plus matchup that they should win. Um, I mean, where you drafted it, you picked him in the second round. You have to start him still. Like, I almost got a trade for him last week, but the guy turned it down. And honestly, thank God he did. So, sorry, Kenyon Drake uh, managers out there. All right, let's move on. Oh, this is going to be a trouncing Eagles at Steelers. Steelers are favored minus seven. They've had two weeks to come to prepare because of the uh, Titans woes with COVID Um, Steelers minus seven against the one, two and one Eagles. I am smashing the Steelers to cover minus seven Um, for the Steelers. I mean, you just want to see them put up points, really. You, they got to sit out a week. They've looked great yep. up until this point. They've really been able to run the ball. Um, Deontay Johnson has been the focal point of that passing game. Hopefully, Juju gets continues to get a little more involved. I would like to see Chase Claypool start to take over the wide receiver three reps from uh, James Washington. Uh, that is a name to know. Chase Claypool, potential stash. Um, other than that, I'm not starting Eric Ebron anywhere. Ben doesn't like tight ends. And then for the Eagles, Alshon limited in practice. <laughs> Hopefully he comes back and gives something to that wide receiver core. That's just a dearth of mediocrity. And then Ertz currently, yep. Zach Ertz currently tight end 17 and a half PPR. When are you going to drop Zach Ertz? You can't drop Zach. I think you have to play him. Like, even if you were to finish the season as tight end 17, I think you still have to play him every week, right? <laughs> like, like, you're not stubborn there's, after there's no 10 weeks. Get away. <laughs> no, there's no, like, you're the, the success is there of, of him being a top five tight end the last three or four years and at some point 
when they actually get a real wide receiver back, hopefully that opens up the middle of the field for Ertz. I will also say that, you know, just watching the game against uh, the 49ers the other night, I, Carson Wentz gets hit on every single th- drop back. Whether, you know, whether he's scrambled, he gets hit every single play. He's going to get hurt again because he always gets hurt. And then if he gets hurt, then Hertz is going to be in. And I don't think that's good for Zach Ertz either. There's so many Ertz and Hertz and hits and whatever you want to like. There's just not a lot to like about this offense right now. And uh, yeah, you like that? I came up with all that on, to- on the top of my Ooh. head. But yeah, you have to keep playing Zach Ertz because he's freaking Zach Ertz. Yeah, that's about all I have to say about that game. Let's move on to Rams at the Washington football team. Rams favored minus seven and a half. I am smashing the Rams to cover that. Uh, I just have no faith in the Kyle Allen experience currently debuting at the quarterback position for the Washington football team. Not only was Dwayne Haskins benched, he was demoted to quarterback three with Alex Smith being named the backup <laughs> to Kyle Allen. Um, hopefully somebody can figure out how to get the ball to Terry McLaurin, man. Uh, other than that, I'm firing up McLaurin and Gibson. You saw Gibson coming out of his shell last week. I think that really uh, he begins to flourish in that offense and finishes at least as a mid to high end uh, running back two for the rest of the season. Um, for the Rams, I love this backfield so much. They hate Daryl Henderson. <laughs> the Rams hate Daryl Henderson. Listen to the snap percentage for Daryl Henderson over four weeks. Uh, week one, 7%. Uh, then Akers gets hurt. Week two, 42%. Oh, looks amazing. Week three, 49%. Still looks amazing. And then you're like, oh my God, it's the Daryl Henderson takeover show. When, when, when Akers comes back, too late, buddy. Henderson has the backfield. So, and you know what happens? You know what happens? Akers is still out. <clears throat> Week four, Daryl Henderson, 39% of snaps. boy. They just, it's not his backfield. Malcolm Brown snap share that same time. 60%, 54, 49, and 61% last week. If they're just waiting for Acres to get back, I'm telling you. So, don't drop Acres. If you have Daryl Henderson, I would try to trade him and say that he's the guy when everybody knows he's not the guy. But what are you looking for out of this matchup? Yuck! Screw that entire backfield. I'm so glad I own zero shares of any Rams running backs in four leagues. That's like the only thing that I've done good this year so far. <laughs> I uh, I, I want to see, <laughs> I, I keep waiting for the Rams pass offense to be better. Uh, I mean, Cooper Cup is wide receiver 15, Bobby Trees, Robert Woods is, is wide receiver 18. There, There's still the upside there. And I mean, Tyler Higby, I mean, he had the three touchdown week um, after, you know, coming in with a good deal of fanfare. Um, besides his three touchdown week, he hasn't scored over seven points and half PPR uh, in any of the other three weeks, which is somewhat disappointing, um, I'll say. So that that's just, there's just not there's just not a lot to like there, uh, and yeah, it, the Washington football team's offense they're meh. I like if if you're a Gibson owner, you know, hopefully you have better options. I said last week to to not play Gibson because you might have better options. I don't know if I really want Antonio Gibson trying to run it run at their front that, that the uh, Rams have. He Again, it's a crappy offense. Do you really want to start mediocre players on a crappy offense? Uh, I, I personally don't. I, I would love to see Alex Smith be the quarterback there. Um, but yeah, the, the rest of it is just, just keep it all. Yeah, I miss what Case Keenum did for that offense at the beginning of last year, man. But I digress. That's very sad. Right? When you miss That's Case a, Keenum. I mean, yeah, come on. <laughs> uh, let's get into our next game. The, Dolphin at the Dolphins at the 49ers. The uh, Niners are currently minus nine over the Finns. I will probably take, I might take the under 
on that. I, I don't know. It just seems seems like a, a decent spread, uh, a decently large spread. Um, Dolphins, Gaskin snap percentage, 75%. Um, he was in on 75% of snaps in week three. Every other game that the Dolphins have played, he's been in at about 65% including this past week. Um, so everybody thought that the Miles Gaskin takeover happened in week three, and guess what? He lost out on 10% of snaps in week four. Um, week three was the Dolphins' only win of the season thus far. Just goes to show if they're behind, then Miles Gaskin is not involved as much. Um, not starting really any of the receivers. Uh, Preston Williams is not startable. Neither is Isaiah Ford. Devontae Parker, maybe, um, as a flex. Uh, the Niners, Moster got in a limited practice today, still dealing with that mild MCL sprain from week two. I think he's on track to play Sunday, um, which I think would obviously give managers a boost for everybody that drafted him. Uh, McKinnon, I think, is the story, though. 92% snap share last week. Man. That's insane. It's going to be crazy to see what that workload is moving forward between those two guys. And then George Kittle, I think, is should be in <sighs> conversation for tight end one overall on the season. So. So you're 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 taking back the who who would you trade for Zach Ertz? And you said nobody besides Kelsey won for one last week. I would week. not trade you, George Kittle for I would not trade George Kittle for anyone. How many how many tight ends would you now trade for Zach Ertz after saying you would only trade Kelsey last year? I would or not trade. Yeah, Kelsey. so if I had Zach Ertz, who, who would who, I trade who? him away for? I would trade Zach Ertz away for Mark Andrews. This this might this might be our new weekly segment. Who actually. would you trade just, Zach Ertz for? See see how much yeah, how much the hate just grows. straight up tight ends. Who? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Let's see. I would. <laughs> Definitely trade him for Travis Kelsey. Obviously, I feel like that's a given. Uh, I would also definitely trade him for uh, George Kittle, but n neither of those managers are making that trade. Um, Mark Andrews, I would probably trade him for. Darren Waller, I would probably trade him for. Uh, I mean, like Robert Tanyan is the leading tight end in scoring right now. I'm not <laughs> trading him for Robert Tanyan because I feel like his value gets destroyed when Devonte comes back next week. Noah Fant, I am not trading him for because he's hurt. Uh, Darren Waller, I think I think I would trade him for Waller. Um. Johnny Smith, I would not because he's on the COVID team. Tyler Higby, I would not. Dalton <laughs> Schultz, I would not. TJ Hawkinson is intriguing. Uh, TJ Hawkinson. All right, so so we're at like six. Yeah, five or six guys. Just uh, to, to, just to go, yeah, just to go back to the 49ers. Uh, I mean, for me, Jeff Wilson was a colossal disappointment last week after having 12 carries uh, and a receiving touchdown the week before. Uh, literally three carries, six yards, one catch for 13. He literally did nothing. He was very disappointing after being, you know, very involved in the offense. And it, be, it was all McKinnon. Um, so that that was, that just sucked. Uh, Shanahanigans, as as Jason would call it. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, I mean, a healthy George Kittle completely changes that offense. I do think Ayuk is borderline droppable uh, with a healthy George Kittle, with a healthy... Um, you know, just if, if McKinnon's going to stay healthy and you have Kittle back, just Debo's Jeff back. Wilson's there and Kittle's back and Debo and like most are, like, I just think Brian, you know, I just think Ayuk is droppable. I, or he's Brandon not going to Ayuk, give you, Ayuk. He, 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 he had such a guy. pretty run. Um, so yeah. And, and, and from a Miami standpoint, um, I, I mean, it's it's Devonte Parker bust for me. I I don't really want to start anybody else besides him. Yep. All right, let's move on. Giants at the Cowboys. Cowboys are currently favored minus nine and a half. 
Uh, for the Giants, it's really just a question of can they get on track against the Dallas Cowboys' terrible defense this week. If they can't, I don't think that they can really get on track much this year. Uh, it's been a colossal disappointment. Yep. I'm not starting anybody on this team until that they show that they can do something. I would hope that Darius Slayton has an appearance this week and does something for anybody playing best ball. Um, and then for the Cowboys, it's the exact opposite. I'm firing up every Cowboy I have. So um, I think it's going to be I it, they they could blow them out by like 15, 20, and I wouldn't be shocked. Or they uh, they could also lose and we, let the Giants in because their defense <laughs> is that bad. Yeah, I, I would not trust the Cowboys defense to hold a lead. Um, I I would I would trust um, strippers more around my wife um, than I would the Cowboys defense at this point to keep their clothes on. I I have literally no no faith in in the Cowboys defense to What is that um, analogy? <laughs> I'm saying that I would trust a stripper keeping his clothes on with my wife in his vicinity. Oh, it's more a than male stripper. The Cowboys was... defense holding elite. Yeah. I had what no you idea think I was talking about. <laughs> well, I'm not interested in them, so that's not where my head went. I was very confused. I don't trust. No, it's I, fine. I don't trust the Giants offense at all. But at the same time, I trust the Dallas defense less. And so if there was ever a week for your boy, Danny Jones, who I believe you had in the top 12 going into the season, who's currently quarterback 30. I think that it's got to be this week or <laughs> or it's bust so uh, things but Jason Alex is always wrong, wrong. Out, but yeah um if <sighs> you know De- Devonta Freeman is is the guy to look here look for here hopefully he has a big game and kind of can can cement himself as their number one running back and again if they don't get it going this week they're never going to get it going and so fire up your giants with caution Alex has trust issues. Moving on. Broncos at the Patriots has been taken off of Vegas uh, because Stefan Gilmore, really because they shouldn't have played last week is honestly what it comes down to. They shouldn't have played the game. You have Stefan Gilmore, who tested positive with COVID today, played a football game two days ago and was all up on Pat Mahomes in the post game. And so it's it's going to be a mess. Hopefully nobody else on that plane or anybody else that was around Gil- around Gilmore test positive this week. Um, if they do, I think that that game is going to look real questionable to be played. Um, for the Broncos, you're honestly a little bit excited because you get Philip Lindsay back. Um, he practiced in full. I would start Fant, Judy, and Melvin, and that's about it. Um, Melvin had a great week, 24 some odd points against uh, or in half PPR, I should say. So, man, I did not see that coming, but uh, he he definitely had a great week last week. But yeah, as as we're recording this, Noah fan is doubtful for the game on Sunday. I again, I would be surprised if they do play. Um, If you're looking for a replacement, theoretically, Jake Butt uh, is his replacement. Uh, Brett, I mean, Brett Ripien looked actually pretty good against the Jets. Um, so I, I mean, if he's going to keep throwing to Fant, uh, or whoever the tight end is playing, uh, he's, you know, Brett Ripien is much better than Jeff Driscoll. So yeah, it's, it, it was the Melvin Gordon show. He's currently running back 11, uh, which is definitely better than I think anybody thought he would be doing this year. He was ranked in the, in the twenties in most, uh, preseason rankings. It's um, because it was a split back system and that. you're getting the second back now, right? So I think he kind exactly. of Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yep. So I, I would not be surprised to to see that decrease. Uh, so potentially now is the time to trade him, especially if you don't know that the game's going to happen on Sunday um, to, uh, you know, potentially unload Melvin and see what you can get for him. Yeah. Uh, what are you looking for out of the Patriots? Um 
I don't know. I mean, to me, it, I think it's hard, kind of hard to start anybody, really. Um, I'm not super. Yes, Damian Harris had a great week last week. I totally hear you. Everybody's screaming in the Twitterverse. Uh, I think I yeah. just think that he's only going to be good for as long as Michelle is out. And once Michelle comes back, good luck trying to pick the running back that you want to start there. Um, that couple they, with the they fact, still have Burkhead and they still have James White and they still like there's still so many options there. That by yeah. the time you throw Sony Michelle back in, who is on IR and, and out for three weeks, like who knows? I, my biggest concern is freaking Julian Edelman, man. He only had three catches. Uh, he only had two two catches the week before that after having a big game against Seattle. Um, he he's borderline not playable uh, until Cam comes back. And uh, yeah, just he doesn't seem like he's quite the focal point of their offense like he was. He was getting drafted in the seventh or eighth round going into the season. You probably have better options, uh, but he's still a name that that might be hard to bench. But I would uh, I would liberally bench him um, because the upside's there. But with whoever they're starting, whether it's Brian Hoyer or Jared Stidham or whoever, they're just. There isn't a lot of upside unless Cam's playing. No, he's a low end flex play. And then for the running backs, anybody trying to start a Patriots running back, the Broncos are giving up the third fewest amount of fantasy points to running backs. So I would recommend staying away from that as well. Uh, next game yep. Colts at the Browns. Colts are favored minus two. I think the Browns could potentially cover here. Um, Colts. I mean, it's just another mess where I don't think that they're giving Jonathan Taylor the ball enough. And then for the Browns, I don't know. I I saw this amazing stat. You ready for this? Total touchdowns so far this season. New York Giants, three. Odell Beckham, four. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Oh, man. I... Uh... Um, I, I would like to brag for a quick second uh, ah, okay. in, in our league. I did pick up Rodrigo Blankenship uh, for zero dollars. Who's currently the number two kicker? He should be rostered in all leagues. And again, I'm I'm apparently the kicker guy uh, on this podcast. And then, I mean, who would have seen this coming? But of all people, after saying I'm not interested in Darnus Johnson. Uh, I put in a zero bid and I got him in our league. Uh, he, he should be rostered. Um, if, uh, if he is available in your league, you, sh- you should go pick him up on the off chance that, that he does pull or, you know, that he really does get a lot of carries. I would caution you against playing him this week. Uh, Indy's defense is the fourth uh, best against fantasy running backs. Uh, but again, that's what Cleveland's offense is designed to do is run the ball. If there was ever a time to trade Odell Beckham, it was after last week. Um, you should do it as soon as you can. Yeah, absolutely. I guess one more thing I would say for the Colts is it is becoming harder and harder to start Naheem Hines. Um, he's like a really low end flex play right now. They've turned that backfield into a three headed monster, a monster, excuse me, with Jordan Wilkins getting play. And I don't understand why Jordan Wilkins is running the ball nine times a game and catching balls out of the backfield (laughs) when you have Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines. So it's just more annoying and it kind of kills everybody else's value. So I'm hoping that that stops eventually. But with that, let's move on to I'm so glad. So glad that you went out and spent a ton of money on Naheem Hines. Well, everybody else paid for him too. Somebody that. Not me. Save your sauce. Yeah, uh huh. The the zero and four guy is talking crap to the two and two guy. Yeah, please tell me. Is anybody else zero and four in our league? No, just you alone at the bottom. Zero and four, looking at wearing a dress to our draft next year. That's what I thought. Great, awesome. <clears throat> Sometimes it's nice to be on bottom. <laughs> Oh my God. Our Sunday night game Vikings at the Seahawks Seahawks favored minus seven. I think I'm going to take the Seahawks to cover that. Honestly, maybe, I don't know. I think it has a potential to really to become a shootout. Um, 
I also think for the Vikings, let's talk Vikings first because I, I just can't wait to share some some stats. Um, I think that it's the last chance go. you will have this season to not pay an arm and a leg for Jay Jefferson. Uh, Justin Jefferson is leading all rookies in reception yards with almost 350. He is the only rookie with a 90 plus uh, pro football focus grade through four weeks since 2006. And he is the only player in the last 10 years to have more yards. uh, The, Oh, excuse me. The only player in the last 10 years to have more yards in their first four games is None other than Stefan Diggs. <clears throat> Lastly, Justin Jefferson is eighth in the NFL in receiving yards, and he didn't start the first two games. So, just saying, do you couple you, that with the you, fact are that... Are you waiting for me to... No, I'm not waiting for you at all. Let me continue, please. The Seahawks are giving up the second most points to quarterbacks, and they're giving up the most points to the wide receiver position in the NFL. I think that they absolutely get lit up. I think I would start Justin Jefferson everywhere. I would start Adam Thielen everywhere. Don't look back. Kirk Cousins is probably available in too many leagues uh, and potentially a decent streaming option. Uh, for the week yep. here. So, yeah, I was I was just gonna say about Kirk Cousins. N- not only is he streamable this week, I know you mentioned Teddy Bridgewater, but I mean Kirk Kirk is got a very good matchup against the Seahawks, but then he f- follows it up with a home game against Atlanta. Wow, back uh, to so, back, yeah, yeah. So there, you know, this offense could continue to explode. Um. And so, yeah, you're firing up Justin Jefferson the next two weeks. You're firing up Adam Thielen. Um, if Delvin Cook uh, continues to cook, uh, he's currently running back three. He's been everything you would expect him to be. Um, question is, when does he get hurt? I'll continue to say it every week. Uh, Alexander Madison should be owned in every league, just on the off chance that Delvin goes down because Madison's just as good of a bat like he's a a slight downgrade but he's going to give you very similar production uh if and when delvin cook goes down um from the seahawks perspective um yeah you start your studs and just let them roll the the over under in this game seems a little high at 57 um which is crazy high uh it i believe it's the second highest line of the week um, the highest line was 65 in the Vegas, in the Vegas Raiders, uh, Kansas city chiefs game. 65 is so I've never seen a, that high of a line before. That's uh, an Vegas over correction like, right, from Vegas, take, man. You're going to take the over. All right. You're going to pay for it and good luck betting against the under. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, start your studs in this one and, uh, and hope that, uh, Sunday night's, uh, a passing affair. Um, the only the only thing that I would caution the people that are going to bet the over fifty seven is, I would not be surprised to see a very heavy dose of Chris Carson and a very heavy dose of of Dalvin Cook in this one, and they would try to play ball control because neither coach wants to entertain the masses on Sunday night. <laughs> Uh, for the Seahawks, the Vikings are giving up the 14th most points to QBs and the fourth most points to receivers. I absolutely think that Russ is going to light it up and it's going to be one of the more entertaining yep. night games so far this season. So I'm excited for that game. And then our Monday night game, the finale uh, Chargers at the Saints. Saints are currently minus eight. At home, um, do the Saints cover minus eight with the Chargers? I have no idea. Um, the the premature uh, death of Drew Brees uh, was somewhat <laughs> overturned last week after he had a uh, after he showed that his arm is alive. Apparently, uh, j- it the, for me this comes down to how many mistakes did Justin Herbert make against the Saints defense. Uh, he's looked really good. Um, Keenan Allen's looked really good. And can Joshua Kelly do something more than what he did after Austin Eckler went out? Um, and we'll finally get to see, you know, how much of a share does Justin Jefferson 
uh, or sorry, Justin Jackson take over uh, in that backfield now that Eckler is going to be out for the next month. From a Saints perspective, I mean, theoretically, Michael Thomas is finally going to play again. Uh, and we know that that offense is going to look substantially different. Uh, theoretically, if Michael Thomas plays, then maybe Kamara will have a few less touches. But I, he's clearly the guy that makes that team go. Uh, T- Trey Collin Smith is borderline startable, uh, I guess. But uh, again, the Chargers defense is very good. Um, and once Michael Thomas comes back, Trey Collin Smith becomes wide receiver three in that offense, or maybe even wide receiver four, because you would consider Kamara in front of him. So, uh, yeah, it, having Michael Thomas back really changes that whole dynamic on that team. And hopefully he comes back and is healthy. Yeah. F- for the Saints, for me, I. I think the Camara managers have to be a little bit frustrated with the uh, the output of Lat Murray last week. Uh, he plowed mm-hmm. in for a three yard touchdown on third down, which actually cut the Saints' deficit to fourteen to seven in the first quarter, and then he scored again later in the game um, and and made it thirty five to fourteen New Orleans. So. Yeah, oh, man, 14 rushing attempts, 64 yards and two scores. You got to be a little bit annoyed as the Camara manager there that he's getting a three and six yard touchdown. Granted, the second one, they were up two scores when he scored and it was in the second half. So that is more understandable. But uh, the first quarter touchdown uh, bothers me for Camara. I mean... I'm going to sit here and complain. The guy still up puts the guy still put up 20 points. So, but yeah, man, it would, it's going to be really nice for that offense to get Michael Thomas back. Yep. So, um, I think that that does it for our, uh, weekly or our game previews. Um, I do, however, have a little bit of five. Yeah. Week five. I do have a little bit of, Newsy stuff. Newsy stuff. Alex, our newsy stuff is this is uh, episode 37 of the podcast. And I just filmed a podcast for an hour and 12 minutes before I realized that that is a giant bag of toilet paper sitting in the background that I did not move before (laughs) I pressed record. So. (laughs) <laughs> I like Charmin Ultra Soft. What do you like to wipe your hindquarters with? Anything that's not one ply toilet paper. Okay. Like well, if it's one ply, the, then you're putting 30 sheets on. Well, yeah, I, I don't know if I have like a particular uh, brand of TP that I like the best, but I do know that Sam's Club uh, does have very high quality uh tp i also know that costco has very high quality tp um i one one thing that's always really been weird to me is like how do we flush toilets all the time and then they're able to recycle the water that we drink i like i know it's filtered and i i get all of that it just it literally boggles my mind that it's all connected and we're pooping in the water that we drink you know, water treatment plants just yeah it's just i mean you're literally just drinking your poop at some point oh man that's kind of like listening to this podcast at this point let's transfer to the social media page <laughs> we are the fantasy football sackos please follow us everywhere at the ff sackos on twitter facebook instagram and tiktok um Yeah, hopefully by the time I post this video, we are at 100 subs on YouTube. That's incredible. Thank you, guys. Uh, Anybody that has listened, like, subscribe everywhere. Uh, We will see you again after week five with uh, with some week six waivers. Until then, check us out for more content. We are also, I should announce, we are also um, going to start regularly posting waiver wire columns on Tuesdays. And the first one is up on the fantasy football sackos.com. That is our website. So thank you guys so much. Have a good night. Question for you. 
Do you stand when you wipe or are you still a sitter when you wipe? No, sitter when you shitter. Come on now. I'm a gentleman. Yeah, I, yeah, I stand up. So uh, everybody's different. We all poop. Good night. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.